So here's a question. We've got a 25 gram sample of gallium at 25 degrees Celsius. Nice number. Is added to 75 grams of water at 75 degrees Celsius. If no heat is lost to the surroundings, calculate the final temperature of the water and gallium after they exchange heat. So they're gonna exchange heat and reach the same temperature. The temperature has to be between 25 and 75 degrees Celsius, which if this were most material, if it was water and any other metal, this problem would be pretty simple because you don't have a phase change. So it would just be kind of one step and, and you're done. However, gallium is special because gallium has a melting point of 29.76 degrees Celsius. I also have up here specific heat. I have uh, just one specific heat value for gallium, whatever the state of matter is, so 0.37 joules per gram degrees Celsius, and a heat of fusion of 5.59 kilojoules per mole. So the gallium is going to heat up to this temperature, and then it's going to melt, and then we need this number, and then it's going to keep heating up. So the reason we can kind of guess that yes, this gallium is going to melt is that the gallium is a smaller sample, right? We have three times as much water. Um, and the gallium specific heat is 0.37, whereas water's specific heat is 4.184. So water has a lot, a lot, uh, takes a lot more, gives off a lot more energy before its temperature changes whereas the temperature of gallium is going to go up much more quickly by comparison. So what you want to do is think about this and break it into steps. So step one, gallium gallium's absorbing the energy, but first part, it's going to heat up to its melting point. And so I, Q equals MCAT. We've got a mass of 25 grams. Here's the specific heat, 0.37. And that's the temperature change to get to the 29.76. And to do that, it only takes 44.03 joules. So I just labeled that as step one. You do want to consider the state changes that might take place during an exchange of heat. The liquid water is going to cool. Well, if it's cooling, it's giving off energy. So you can see that that's negative. Um, negative 44 joules, 75 grams of water, specific heat of water. TF minus 75, and we end up with 74.86 degrees Celsius. So it only cooled a very tiny bit. Uh, but this is after step one. This is after warming the gallium to its melting point. Step two is the gallium melting. So we use the specific heat, or excuse me, we use the heat of fusion, but first we need to convert to moles. So 25 divided by the molar mass of gallium times that we get two kilojoules. So a lot more energy, but still not tons. We got two kilojoules. So you can see step two over here, we have 2,000 joules. Made it negative because the water is giving off that energy. Set it equal. And notice the TF minus, the initial temperature I put there is the 74.86 because we're looking at this as a separate step and we get a new final temperature of 68.49 degrees Celsius. So this is after melting all of the gallium. Once the gallium is liquid and the water is liquid, you are not gonna have any more state changes or, or phase changes. It's not gonna go between Whatever. Uh, so Q absorbed equals negative Q released, and it's pretty simple. We plug in 25 grams of gallium, the specific heat of gallium, TF minus the initial temperature of the gallium. Notice that initial temperature is the melting point, right? That's, this is right after all the gallium melts, it's now this temperature. And the water, 75 grams, 4.184, and TF minus uh, the 68.49, that was the temperature after melting the gallium. And notice that's negative. Um, so I multiplied that, you know, combining the terms. Um, this, I, I took out the units. I thought it would be a little bit easier to do that. But the unit for this one is joules per degree Celsius. Right? Joules per degree Celsius. And the unit for this one is joules. In the end, the joules cancel out and you get degrees Celsius. But 
Um, this is joules per degree Celsius. This is joules. This is joules per degree Celsius. This is joules. Uh, so we end up with, we combine our terms. This, again, this will be joules. This unit will be joules per degree Celsius. When you divide, the Celsius comes up and the joules cancel. So temperature, final temperature is 67.4 degrees Celsius. You might look at a problem like this and be like, oh, it can't be so close. Why is, it, why is this one 30 and this one 68, but our final temperature is 67? Um, but you have to see, does this make sense? Well, the specific heat for gallium is 0.37 and, and, and waters is 4, so it's 10 times less. So it takes 10 times less energy to change this temperature. So okay, it makes sense that way. Also, we have more of the water. So we have three times more water, that is 10 times, um, takes 10 times as much energy to change the temperature.